Well, I won't waste your time with an intro, but yeah, my video about me being worried was justified more than I would have ever thought, as the servers are dookie. But there's more issues than just that. Some other issues that others haven't brought up that I will since I honestly believe this video will be more of a deep dive than all the other videos. Let's get into every detail that you can take as a rant or a patch note suggestion. On my Guido, there's one of the command posts where you can straight up walk through this wall and clip into this segment of the map, while also having the ability to shoot enemies within it, on top of being able to throw mines that attach to the other half of the wall for a free insta-kill. There's other areas on the map identical to this one where the glitch can be repeated. No unorthodox technique required like the other clipping bucks from the original that they still left in sadly. Just you walking into this on a command post no less. I discovered this accidentally when playing online. Here he was in my speculation video asking them to remove clipping bugs only for them to add more of them that are even easier to access. No clipping bugs from the original were removed, by the way. How fun. Naboo. Remember that annoying glitch where the AI gets stuck in some corner of Naboo? Well, I was hoping they would fix that glitch from the original, but not only did they fail to fix that, they also added another on top of that where the enemies can spawn at some caged balcony on top of a command post where they can't get out or are hard to kill. You have to throw grenades up there, or get there with a character that jumps high like Jedi and Jetpack users. So, yeah, you have AI walking in this corner like the original, but now you have teammates that can spawn in a place that makes it impossible for them to contribute. On top of a visual glitch of missing railings on a balcony. Like, how the fuck did someone not notice something like that? There is a part of the campaign where you literally have to take out a control panel on this balcony. This pretty much confirms this not being playtested. Not just the multiplayer, but the single player as well. Oh right, and for you cucks trying to play dumb and say, oh, everything is fine offline, fuck you. Go fuck yourself and let a car run over you. The campaign is missing cutscenes, so how the fuck are you saying this? Do you not remember the game you fucking played, you foolish, complacent, dementia gamer? I'll admit that I didn't experience this firsthand as I was trying to go into multiplayer first anyway. You know, the main reason to buy this, especially on console, if you didn't buy or play for online, then you might as well have stuck to your original Xbox version, since it's backwards compatible. I guess there's overrated as fuck PlayStation that would force you to use a PS2 due to their shitty game preservation that opened the doors for shitty ports like this, but oh well. Some of these details are more subtle, but the very first thing I did when launching this game was going into instant action and then launching Hero Assault on Bespin, with no AI to test things out. The first thing I noticed as a bit of a battle from purist is that they made Jedi sprinting slightly slower than my original Xbox version, and that pisses me off. We're supposed to be going up, not down. This reminds me of those shitty Insomniac Spider-Man games that had slower swinging speeds than past Spider-Man games on the PS2. One thing I caught on to later is that there's more of a fucking input delay than my original Xbox version, which makes close range dash strikes harder than they used to be. Look at this shit. This delay also applies to the infantry units as well, although it's more detrimental on Saber users given that their dash strikes are often better than their regular attacks like Yoda and Luke as some of the best examples, etc. But why the hell are you guys making something worse than my original Xbox version? I'll get into more of those details later, but anyway. Speaking of heroes, they added Hero Assault to every map, unlike the original Battlefront, which was a step in the right direction that actually gave players a false hope for improvement. But even then, they slightly fucked that up. On maps like Geonosis and Endor, you have a native species that would assist one side. But for heroes versus villains, they didn't take the native AI off, so now you have Ewoks and Geonosians attacking you on the side when the focus is supposed to be 
heroes, and villains. Kashyyyk was normal, luckily, as they got rid of the Wookiees, but they honestly didn't fuck that up because of the original Xbox DLC they copied when they added heroes vs. villains to other base game maps like Kashyyyk and these other maps, etc. Pretty cool how Pandemic was smart enough to make the basic decision of not including outside factions for heroes vs. villains. I don't know how the fuck Aspire looked at how they handled it on Kashyyyk and still decided to leave the native species on the maps. You know, the Ewoks are cute. Maybe I could give them a pass due to the villains already having an edge when it comes to real players. And Ewoks aren't as effective and annoying as hearing this sound all the time. Then we have another change that probably happened due to laziness of them not wanting to differentiate the copies, but they made Battlefront like the PC port on console, like them reducing the number of mines from 4 to 3 along with slightly nerfing the splash radius of the rocket, which has honestly thrown my heavy gameplay off a little. The sniper no longer has an aim indicator when outside of zooming, like the PC version, but unlike the console version. I disagree with all these changes, especially the changes with Sniper, as that's a skill requiring class, and visually nerfing it encourages people not to experiment with it unless they want to put a dot in the middle of their screen like some sweaty tryhard, in tandem with the dookie servers making Sniper even worse, which I'll catch you later. Point is, people have nostalgia and muscle memory, leave things the way they were when it comes to their platform. People who played it on a PS2 or original Xbox bought the classic collection for a current PlayStation or Xbox. Your game doesn't have crossplay, especially with PC, so why detrimentally make these versions the same? Like there's some actual changes I suggested in my last video I made before the game came out, such as fixing various bugs the original had like the infinite force choke glitch light side force move hitboxes being worse on the Republic era versus the Empire era, blocking hit detection being iffy and the infinite block glitch, but none of that shit got fixed. Here I was hoping for the few flaws of the original to be fixed, and now we're here hoping they fix their new issues, like missing cutscenes apparently, and the fucking servers, which they'll get into shortly after showing Battlefront 2004 some love. Now, I will admit I did start to appreciate Battlefront 2004 a little more than before with the introduction of online play, even this butchered server version of it, as vehicles have more of a powerful presence in the second game. Vehicles being this cracked is probably detrimental, but I think it gives this game something to offer. Overall, this game may have more of a traditional war theme that I could appreciate, even though it isn't as good as their sequel due to the content the sequel would add, like more planets and maps like Mustafar and Dagobah, space, etc., along with playable heroes, or things like balance issues that are more prevalent here than the second game due to classes getting different weapons that are straight up inferior like the hard to hit shots grenade launcher versus a shotgun with a spread, and droidicas versus clones. If they fix this remaster, maybe I'll give it a retrospective review, but anyway, on to what they fucked up. The special features that would show art and even a trailer for Republic Commando are just gone now. They could have left the Republic Commando trailer in since Aspire apparently ported that themselves without its server sadly, but anyway. There was a tutorial section in the menu that would play clips teaching you many mechanical aspects of the game and those are also just gone for no reason. Online gameplay aside, this Battlefront only suffers from menu features, but those said menu features become fucking atrocious for no fucking reason when you have to press the right bumper or R1 to select maps while pressing A on Xbox or X on PlayStation launches the playlist. Why the fuck is it like that? It wasn't like that in their original where you'd select the map like a normal game by pressing A instead of RB and then scrolling over to continue to launch the playlist. Those shitty controls had me giving into muscle memory and launching the playlist early accidentally. Speaking of shitty controls, the flight controls are permanently inverted unlike both original Battlefronts where you can switch it, more downgrades, yay, like fuck, but anyway. 
Man you should aside, this one wasn't handled as badly as the second game. The servers run like ass with the usual issues others have reported, like shots not registering and lag along with the droidica being unusable by real players when played online. My friend who's a pretty good sniper on the game stated that he struggled more with shooting regular players and adapted by shooting less laggy bots instead. But yeah, this one requires less work and it even looks consistently better than the original version. Same can't completely be said for the second game though. Some aspects of Battlefront 2 don't look as pretty as the original Xbox version, running on a Series X especially, as they made certain parts brighter for no reason like Mustafar's ground that wasn't bright and grayish before, it was more of a dirty black brown similar to the films themselves. This is probably due to the PC port once again, but the Waters of Kashyyyk is a bright blue instead of a dark blue like it was in the original Xbox version. This shade of blue just looks better to be honest and matches the films more accurately. But then there's the DLC maps that take a fairly huge hit. Bespin does not look as pretty as the original Xbox version when it comes to coloring and shading as this tweet pointed out. I noticed it too when launching it up as my first match. Same could be said for a Yavin that looks too bright once again in a way that looks much worse than the original Xbox Series X version. Other pals of mine have argued with the subjectivity of my graphical opinions on this matter, but then there's the Renvar maps that undeniably look worse than the original Xbox version. Just look at this shit when compared or even on its own merits, especially with this shot here where the new version has this tall building being much brighter than its shadow that it's casting for some odd reason. Subtle detail, but they also reversed the heroes versus villain spawns on the Renvar Citadel map for some reason. This probably is due to them just stealing another PC mod. Oh right, and they somehow fucked up graphics on a basic sphere. They made Coruscant look like a turd. This is the source material, this is the original Xbox version, and this is theirs. Then there's audio fucking up in various ways I don't really care to repeat, as others have already delved into, like a new audio bug where things get very loud, the 2004 loading screen sounding differently, or the 2005 victory screen sounding a little different, along with them leaving in an audio bug from the original, where the cantina music keeps playing and then it later mutes all of your audio. Honestly man, I think it's clear as day that a lot of these detriments have come from just lazily copying and pasting the PC port, which I honestly think is an inferior version to the original Xbox version, existing servers and mods aside, with various things I delved into like sprinting speeds, sprint input delay, and the exclusive Xbox DLC as far as official pandemic content goes. The original Xbox was more powerful than the other consoles, and I'll take a wild guess that it was more powerful than the average PC when it comes to the ones people were using around that time. It was the only version to have 4 player split screen I believe, yet another feature that the classic edition removed for no fucking reason, which I'll get to later, but anyway. I think they just copied mods of the DLC maps instead of taking the official pandemic DLC. Hell, it's sort of been proven that they took a modder's work based on reports and leaked files. The only pros this new version of Battlefront has over the original Xbox version is some UI changes like the DLC maps having loading screens that show off the map unlike the original Xbox version's DLC, along with renaming the Heroes vs Villains mode Hero Assault when it used to share the same name as Space Assault. They were both called Assault. Every hero is now playable on every Assault map when some heroes didn't get to be played on certain maps due to hardware limitations. Of course Hero Assault is now on every map, although I would say it doesn't suit some of the thinner maps like Polis Masa and Death Star, where dodging the many saber throws are impossible, but it does suit some wide maps like Endor and Felucia, or even Geonosis if they would've removed the Geonosians as said before. We also have a mode called XL that extremely increases the amount of AI on the battleground that used to be exclusive to PC, but now it's on console, but it isn't even playable online sadly. 
Ventress and Kit Fisto now have logos for their new moves on like the original Xbox version, along with them removing that dumb swing timing pattern that the original version had on those two DLC heroes. Although Kit Fisto Saber is no longer animated, which needs to get patched. And then there's Classic Edition Ventress, which made my review outdated, as their Star Blades used to ricochet, but now they don't. I'm trying to be positive, and then I find shit like this in the middle of writing the script. But yeah, that's every improvement. Here's one funny change though, in Battlefront 2004, and the winter maps on Battlefront 2 2005, they made the heavy black, unlike the original. Not that I care too much about this minor change, but it's pretty fucking funny and sad that these devs were more afraid of being called racist than releasing the game with good servers. You know what, I can't even 100% tell if he's black or Indian. I swear they're trying to cater to both by making some hybrid like the 2015 game did. Minor change, but I don't like how characters are more zoomed out on the menu. Now onto the hilarious meta changing mishandling of the multiplayer. Everyone has already said this so I won't waste too much time repeating what others have already said, but multiplayer is ass. Hits don't register sometimes and people occasionally skip around, lightsabers barely land, some attacks don't show up on the screen which makes dodging things harder. But anyway. All these various multiplayer blunders has completely warped the online gameplay to the point where things get changed. They fix the low amount of reinforcements by taking it up from 100 to 350 luckily, but that fix aside, the metas have changed. Gunshots are so unreliable now that you could basically jump around the lobby and not get shot as much as you usually would if the game ran as smoothly as it did offline. Like it's supposed to, since that's supposed to be the selling point. You basically have free movement in most instances, so therefore, the meta becomes explosions like grenades, charges, and especially mines. Mines are their bread and butter. They have the biggest radius and can clear out groups of multiple units, or even one-shot heroes, and can get you the hero very quickly on top of one-shotting most vehicles and taking out the AT-AT or the ATTE with four or five mines. Most of the lobbies have team damage off, so therefore you won't kill yourself by chucking it at people. This tool has always been great, but my point is that it now dominates the meta even further than it did before because of these shitty servers. In a regular circumstance, you'd be at great risk of getting shot at or saber thrown just walking up to people or heroes, but now that the shots are extremely unreliable, it basically allows the heavy to do a lot less work to get in on the other soldiers or heroes to chuck mines at them. Trust me, I main this class and get the scoreboard all the time despite the nerfs they pulled to my little rocket launcher. I'm the king of trash I suppose. But yeah, regular gunshots aren't as effective and in this circumstance the heavy reigns supreme more than he ever did before. It's not about how accurate you can hit, it's about what's most likely to hit as you spam mines and keep rolling forward! That's how winning is done! Jokes aside, mines are more likely to hit because it's an explosion that lingers on the ground before activating. It was the best class before, but now it's less of a debate other than some counterplay the engineer can do, given that he can't activate the mines himself and can take out mines with his fusion cutter. But he can still get caught in the explosion radius of a mine that someone else activated. The engineer may be better if the game ran better, as he can throw his charge further, although the damage and radius isn't as good as the mines. Then there's the unreliable gunshots of Assault and the Sniper that lost his aim indicator. Some bonus classes are solid like the Dark Trooper, Both and Spy, who have like main weapons that are reliable as they aren't traditional blaster shots. Heroes take a hit too. Gigafun gun heroes like Han Solo are a lot weaker due to the unreliability of blaster shots. Leia does a little well as support with invincibility given to teammates along with grenade spam. The Fets become salvageable with bomb spam and a flamethrower that is very reliable, but regular gunshots like what Han and Chewie are pretty much exclusively limited to 
makes them a lot worse, which really sucks as Han Solo was the best gun user and now he's so bad that it may be best not to accept him. But anyway, the fucking heavy feels like more of a hero than heroes now. And the same may even apply to the Jedi. Walking up to someone and hitting them with your lightsaber is now unreliable. It's better to spam saber throw and only ever risk hitting people if you force push them first. The sabers were always sort of best played like this, but with this new lag meta, it's something that is even more of a necessity than ever. I've hit people with sabers only for them to not die. This fucks over heroes like Grievous who only has melee attacks and who I honestly think should have been given mind immunity like the engineers given that he only has melee attacks. Like the servers are so bad that you're making the EA Battlefront's hit detection look good despite the fact that these original games would be better if they ran the way they should. Although I do notice that matches run a little better with less people but it's still bad. There's also some glitch that sometimes happens when you can't move forward and then you have to move back and then forward to move. This usually happens when using the minimap on both battlefronts. Another few cons of multiplayer is that the Battlefront DLC isn't on the second game's playlist in terms of online matches, and I'm also yet to find a dedicated server that has Capture the Flag running. I'm down a solid game mode and four great maps when it comes to multiplayer, which therefore means I haven't got to play Vetris and Kit Fisto online other than Heroes vs. Villains. Oh right, and to top off multiplayer, they fucking took multiplayer down a peg by taking four player local split screen down to two players for no fucking reason when an original Xbox did it, a console that released two generations ago. This was something we knew was the case before buying it, but it really sucks ass given that online multiplayer wasn't good, as I just delved into. As said in my last video, they could have put in the work and put in the hours to make Galactic Conquest and the campaign an online multiplayer or co-op experience to compensate for the local gameplay downgrade they did when prettier games like Halo and Crash Team Racing had it. I had to delay all my planned guide slash review videos because of how this shit is running. I'll happily get to it when or if they fix things, but fuck man. You lazy Aspire cucks and the filthy higher ups inspiring it have gotten so many players to leave because of this shit. As Battlefront Update said, we'll never see the peak of what this game's player base could have been. Players may not even return due to how they released in tandem with all the justified videos people made roasting this shit. Some players that wouldn't have had the perseverance to get good at the skilled mechanics will now use this shitty launch as an excuse. I don't want to hear I told you so's from anyone because nobody could have saw the shit show coming unless it was someone that just didn't want to see the shit succeed in the first place via the dumb anti-multiplayer hive I've roasted in the past and future. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I've covered most core gameplay details that a lot of others have missed. There would definitely be more I missed if I decide to keep digging, like missing stairs on Yavin, the cantina audio glitch being more common, the all map shortcut on instant action no longer being there, Kiati Mundi not having his voice lines restored, and a slew of other glitches they left in from the original. But that's most of the main ones. I may make another video on it someday, but we'll see. I haven't experienced some visual glitches I've seen online myself, but I won't discredit them. It's an extreme shame, but despite the failure of most of the cuck Star Wars content creators that let this shit slide before playing the multiplayer, I'm sure this issue will be forced to be addressed given that they fucked with one of the top gaming brands, a franchise that had the second highest player base for the original Xbox only being beat by Halo 2. Clouded YouTubers like Moist Critical and Ordinary Gamers came in to do what dedicated Star Wars channels failed to do. I'm done. Fuck YouTubers. Only way that Aspire can undo a mere fraction of this blowback would be to go above and beyond by adding every map from the first Battlefront into the second one, along with fixing some of the cons of the original games, as I suggested in my last video, but we'll see, although I probably doubt it. 
check out my other gaming videos and check out my media like my Twitter and Discord and other media mailing tree. But yeah, thanks for watching.